everybody doing today? Today is May 23rd, 2017. I am coming up up in two months. Coming up on three years since my gastric sleeve surgery. And I feel absolutely amazing. So, I, my highest weight was 245. I started this journey around 218, 220. And then uh, I lost weight during the pre-op. I was down to 220. 208. I had my surgery uh, at 208. I am still down to 135 to 140. I gain and lose weight consistently. Every day is a different weight. And yes, I still weigh myself every flipping day. Sometimes a couple of times a day. However, it does not hurt me to weigh myself. If you are going to weigh yourself every day, you got to have that mental mindset that it's okay that you gained a couple of pounds. I like to keep myself accountable through the scale. If the scale says above 140, I'll be like, oh, got to get my protein higher and less carbs kind of thing, you know, so it helps keep me accountable. I have joined the gym. I've been going to the gym every other day, if not every day, as much as I possibly can throughout the week. Uh, and I joined a softball team and uh, I play once or twice a week. So it's been Amazing! I've been having a, a great time feeling fit and healthy. I've been working on these puppies. Woo! Yeah, I do a lot more weights than I do cardio. I love doing weights. I have to wear like a band around my forearm though that puts pressure on there. Oh, my chapstick is disgusting, sorry. Put on some I put some uh, SPF chapstick, it's disgusting tasting, and now I got this nasty taste in my mouth because uh, I had a softball tournament uh, two weeks ago or a week and a half ago or whatever, and I got sunburned so bad on my lips that they blistered up. That's just the leftovers. Anyway, so I'm constantly putting uh, SPF chapstick on it. It leaves a nasty, bitter taste in my mouth. It's gross. Anyhow, uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about a situation that happened to me that I think you might be interested in. So if you're considering weight loss surgery, whether it be the lap band, gastric sleeve, do a dental switch, or the gastric bypass, you, if your insurance isn't gonna cover it, okay? Well, I mean, what I'm gonna talk about, I was trying to get insurance to cover. You need to really do your research because the insurance companies obviously don't know. Uh, be, what I'm about to say, insurance companies do not do any research into the doctors that you go see. Please do your research on which doctors you see. Make sure every doctor is certified and real. Five years ago, I went, uh, my old YouTube name was Lap Band Mel, I think, and I used to watch, religiously watch YouTube after YouTube after YouTube about lap band and patients that had the lap band. It was a very popular procedure back, you know, five years ago. And I got to know quite a few people such as Banded Wendy and um, Banded Steph. And I mean, there was a lot of people I'm still friends with today from watching their YouTube channels. It turned out to be really cool. So I wanted to get the lap band surgery about five years ago. And I found a company through 1-800-GET-THIN and their company, there's two companies, one in San Jose and one in Fremont here in California. And they looked legit, they sounded legit. I talked to the nurses and doctors, they sounded like they knew what they were talking about, blah, blah, blah. And hold on, I'm turning, it, it's a car vlog today. And so I went in to get my procedures done or to get the lap band. They had me fill out like this whole packet of who I am and uh, they checked on my, my insurance. I'm going to tell you right now before I get into real big huge depth about it is that from day one, the day I called and said I want the lap band through you guys, they knew that my insurance was going to deny me from day one, okay? So, there's that. So, I, I go in with my sister-in-law and we fill out this paperwork, we have a consultation, I, I see a nutritionist, we do a psyche valve all in one day, 
we do all these things all in one day and they approve me to go ahead and get the lap band and so I'm working with this lady who um, sets up like two sleep studies for me and does uh, other procedures for me so when I get to the office about I would say two weeks later to see the doctor the doctor recommends me to see or to have my ovaries burned I thought that was really quite odd he's like we've been doing that this that procedure for a lot of patients here it, that way you don't have to have kids anymore and um, or you don't have to worry about kids or having periods and I kind of got this uncomfortable feeling and I'm like you know no what if I do want to have another kid after lap band surgery I want to be able to have that option so I denied wanting to do that surgery he kept on forcing it on me and forcing it on me are you sure are you sure you don't want that surgery and I said yeah I'm sure so uh, that was number one clue that I should have gotten anyway we proceeded to do an endoscopy um, they looked in my stomach they said something like there was something in my stomach and they that I they couldn't figure it out but don't make a big deal about it it's nothing big and then they said I had like plenty of ulcers and um, heart murmurs they were saying I've had all these stuff they were diagnosing me with all the stuff I had two sleep apnea or two sleep tests I got diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea, which, by the way, I just recently got a new test about uh, six months ago, uh, plus some, and I still do have obstructive sleep apnea because my tongue hits the back of my throat So when I'm sleeping, so I have to sleep propped up. Anyway, so that's a true diagnosis. However, these people were diagnosing me with all sorts of things and then sending it to my insurance company. And my insurance company denied me three times and we appealed it three times, re-appealed it three times saying that I had all these comorbidities, I was sick, they said I was borderline diabetes, blah, blah, blah. So, which is fine, I got denied. Um, but by the end of it, somebody the lady I was working with she had quit and then I got a new representative and the new representative was not working with me and my end of my emails I was saying something like you know I really don't feel comfortable with you guys and I decided to leave I didn't want to deal with the company anymore okay fast forward five years later uh, I'm glad I didn't get the lap band number one because the sleep, it, it probably would have caused problems anyway in my body because I hear that the lap band isn't a good procedure for most people it, it causes corrosion and uh, to the stomach and it causes stomach bleeding and the stomach rips apart I just hear so many bad things about the lap band lately and a lot of doctors are shying away from the lap band so I'm actually really glad that this didn't get approved and I ended up in going to Mexico for my sleeve surgery well I just recently got in contact not I they contacted me the FDA investigators and FDA investigators and I sat down at Starbucks for two hours talking about my situation. And in my situation, apparently they were telling insurances that I had heart disease and that I was gonna die. And if I didn't get the procedure, that um, uh, that I was gonna die, this lap band. So they were trying to work for me to try to get me the lap band. So they lied to my insurance, number one. Number two, I come to find out that they were botching people here in California. They, there were six deaths and several people who were um, extremely damaged or hurt by these procedures and come to find out they were uncertified doctors. They were not real doctors. And um, I felt very violated and hurt, especially because they were trying to force me to burn my ovaries. And uh, they put an endoscopy down my, they did uh, down my throat. I, one lady, I hear one person got their throat on the inside sliced and now they can't they don't have any vocal cords and during the endoscopy so I feel very 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 lucky and I'm so glad I went with my gut feeling that I did not go through with these procedures and I am glad that the insurance denied me for a lap band there's a reason for why this happened and I am certainly feel very very lucky that this did not go through I am one of the lucky ones however the, the company wanted to charge me $64,000 to uh, 
to out of pocket to pay for their expenses and because insurance wasn't covering it for all the procedures that I had through them and all the appointments that I had through them and I traveled two hours to this doctor twice a month or something like that suppose a doctor well anyway come to find out they're probably gonna end up getting arrested because obviously they got sick uh, they uh, killed several people unfortunately there were several deaths because of these people they were uncertified doctors I feel absolutely horrible it, it, it's not right and I just want to let you know that whoever is afraid to go to Mexico don't be you know right now in my situation I trust the Mexico doctors that I went to through a lighterme.com than I do than here in California. Oh my gosh, if botching is going to happen, it's going to happen anywhere. Anywhere. There's dishonest and horrible people that uh, are greedy for money. Uh, they were pretending to be doctors and performing all these procedures on people so they can get insurance as money. And uh, come to find out, like I said before, that they knew from day one that I was going to be denied, and yet they played me, and they still played me, and they, they made me still go through all these things, and then by the end of it, they're like, well, if you want to start over, we can start all the way over, and I'm like, no, I'm not starting over, so that's why I left that company, and I fought the insurance. I called the insurance as myself, and the insurance says, said, heck no, we, ain't, we don't do bariatric surgery. They used to. My insurance used to. That's why I decided to do this, and then come to find out, they got rid of that rule was saying it was a cosmetic surgery when bariatric surgery is not cosmetic I disagree with that statement and that policy look non scale victory anyway so I wanted to come to you guys and let you guys know that uh, if you're going to do it in Mexico do it, it especially with the company I went through they are a hundred percent certified and amazing people and I do not regret going to Mexico Tijuana Mexico to have my surgery done this actually made me feel a whole lot better about promoting it um, dr. Elias Ortiz was my doctor and there's other doctors there that are a hundred percent true and real and um, they take very good care of you and I am so glad that I paid my way to get it done in Mexico. I'm glad I did my research after the fact because I did a lot of research on Mexico doctors. I did a lot of research on who to go to. I was recommended to go to a lighter me, so I did a lot of research on them. I talked to them personally several times over the phone and they showed me their certificates. So I was able to get proof and I checked them on the Better Bureau and all that other stuff. So uh, what I'm saying to you is do your research because here in the USA, even here in the USA or any other country, it can happen. Botching and dishonest people, uh, greedy for money, it can happen anywhere. I'm in California. California is an expensive state. And if you're a doctor, you can get paid well. So I could see why people would want to try to represent to be a doctor because you get paid really well here in California as a doctor. So I wanted to come to you guys and let you know, let you know my story and my experience that, um, uh, that I am absolutely truly grateful for my gut. I am truly grateful that nothing serious bad happened to me because anything could have happened, even death. And I am just one of the lucky ones. Unfortunately, there were several deaths through this and rest in peace and uh, prayers go out to the families that lost their loved ones over these greedy people. See what money does to people? Oh, it's absolutely horrible. Anyway, I've been talking for way too long. Thank you for joining Sleeved Mel 2015. If you haven't yet, press that red subscribe button. I still try to keep updated as much as possible. I am doing quite well, guys. I'm doing absolutely amazing. If you need to, come see me every day over at Mom's Vlog 80 at my daily vlogging channel. And we will see you guys all later. I love you so, so much. Ciao. Consider myself blessed.